Oh dear, we have ourselves yet another one of these top prospects who have gone through some serious developmental issues, and as a result, we have the worst case scenario. Today we are talking about Philip Broberg, a top pick by the Edmonton Oilers in the 2019 NHL entry draft, taken 8th overall in front of a whole bunch of notable guys. Broberg was taken one pick above Trevor Zegras. He was taken multiple picks above Boldy, Knight, York, Caulfield, Newhook, Krebs, all legitimately talented NHL caliber players. But Philip Broberg is not an apparent mainstay guy with the Oilers. Left-hand defenseman, 6'3", 198, he's a big dude. And back when he was initially draft eligible in 2019, there was this sentiment going around that said that he may have been one of the best defensemen in the draft. Now, that was a very preliminary kind of idea, mostly spewed up because of what he had done with the Hlinka Gretzky Cup in the 2018-19 season. This tournament took place in August in 2018, and he was so good in this showcase that you had outlets like TSN labeling him as a top Top five pick. It was crazy, the hype train that we saw for Broberg. He was a puck-rushing, puck-moving offensive defenseman with a really stable type of quality to his stride. He was not really the best defensive player, especially as a defenseman, but what Broberg could do was absolutely just go with the puck and take over shifts by himself. There was a really good quality of offense and puck movement that Broberg possessed, which is why he was seen as this top prospect after that Linka Gretzky tournament. Now, we had ourselves a few concerns popping up afterwards in the SHL, the Junior 20 Elsvenskin, etc., etc. It was up and down to say the least, for Broberg and his overall progression. But eventually, he was taken by the Edmonton Oilers, and there was this idea floating around saying that if Broberg pans out to his ceiling, this guy could legitimately be a number one caliber defenseman. Even Victor Hedman went out there and said himself that he sees a lot of himself in Philip Broberg's game. I know that's a really weird comment to make, but we actually did make a video about that all those years ago, that Hedman said that he thought that Broberg was the next him. So, interesting things, right? However, as the years have gone on for Philip Broberg, he was never really able to break out onto the Oilers squad as a mainstay guy. He had 46 games played in 22-23, and that was it. The rest of his days have been numbered, spending time in Bakersfield, spending time with the Oilers, but in a very limited capacity. And as a result, we had ourselves now an idea floating around saying that the Oilers have granted permission for Broberg's camp to seek a trade. Sounds like there has been solid interest on that front. Edmonton isn't likely in getting a pick back, they'd like a player, so you'll have to find a player in a similar situation. Philip Broberg has officially requested a trade, and now his camp has been given the permission to go out there and seek it. We had ourselves some updates as well from Elliot Friedman going out there, saying pretty much the same thing, or not Friedman, excuse me, Kevin Weeks. I'm told the Oilers are exploring potential trade options on young D. Broberg. Given the Oilers' cap situation, it would likely have to be a dollar-in for dollar-out type of transaction. And now, what you're seeing out of Oilers fans after this Broberg news has been released is a lot of irony. Very, very ironic things floating around there, and a lot of this is on Twitter. Here's a tweet made by Dill. Remember when the Oilers leaked to the media that Broberg was off the table when it comes to trading for Chitrin because they thought that he would be as good as Chitrin by 2023? LMAO. And attached is the meme of the guys like laughing down while they're eating. Then there was another tweet here. Some people thought that he was better than Bouchard. The Oilers thought Broberg would be good as Chichren by now. This also got a whole bunch of conversation as well. Jacob Chitrin, if you wanted to get the scoop on this guy, let's go over to the drafts here. We'll go over to 2016 and then scroll down to Jacob Chitrin, who was taken in the 16th overall spot. We get it now, he's an Ottawa Senator, no longer an Arizona Coyote, but he is a very good player. 12 points, 19 games played on pace for about 52 points, which would be a career high. He also was a 40-point guy in 56 games with Arizona back in the day. That's kind of what started up the entire, you know, hype train for Chitrin and what he could be. 
He's a very good player, very solid player. I'd say a lot better defensively than what Philip Broberg has shown off so far, mostly because Chitrin is just an absolute beast of a guy. He's tough to get around, he plays all right in his own zone, he can produce offense, but for Philip Broberg, I mean... There definitely wasn't that same level of stability there in his own profile, because part of what made Broberg such a difficult player to evaluate was how strong he was when skating with the puck, but everything else around that, his decision-making when he didn't have the puck, his defensive coverage, his quote-unquote unengagement on the back end, it wasn't really the most consistent thing, which is why Broberg had so many issues plaguing him in his draft year, and it's why he slid from being like a top three, top four prospect all the way to eighth overall. Now, you could very well say that he shouldn't even been taken there because of the guys that went out. After. You had Trevor Zagres, Caulfield, Boldy, even other defensemen like Soderstrom and Cam York that all went after Broberg. And if the Edmonton Oilers wanted to use this kind of a guy to the best of his skill set, you don't get Broberg onto your team because you want a defensive shutdown guy. You want him to be rushing the puck, you want him to be doing offensive things, and for a team that already boasts Evan Bouchard, who has his own defensive issues in his own right, having a guy like Broberg growing and developing at that rate wasn't really the most projectable type of strategy. So for Broberg, being in a position now where he's had such limited playing time, he's been in the AHL this entire time, to hear that he has officially requested a trade and is now looking to go elsewhere, that's not surprising to me. And in fact, I feel like for the Edmonton Oilers, they have to get this done. Like for the sake of Broberg's own development, I mean, the guy is 22 years old, don't want to say he's like old old, but time is definitely running out, especially for a guy who has been splitting the load between NHL and AHL the past few years. And sure, he had a 23-point season in 31 games played in Bakersfield in 21-22. He looked pretty good in that stint, and even now, he's doing pretty okay. But the numbers, the deployment, everything at the NHL level is just not there. And it's not really like Broberg has been giving Oilers fans much of a reason to stick around anyway. I mean, most of these fans are just kind of laughing that the Oilers thought that Broberg would be as good as Chicharin in 2023. But at the end of the day, this is a fumble, a really bad fumble by the Edmonton Oilers. Firstly, it was a fumble when they drafted him because he wasn't really the guy that they needed the most in that spot, nor was he the best prospect either. And then you have yourselves a development that has gone out here to the point that now Broberg wants out. So for the Oilers, they have to go out there and facilitate this trade. Dollar for dollar transaction isn't going to be too difficult considering Broberg is making $800,000 till the end of this year. It is technically, is this his ELC? I'm not really too sure. I think it is, but he's expiring as an RFA, so any team going out there with some other younger prospect that is, let's just say, in a difficult spot with his team, he's not getting playing time. There are some people suggesting Broberg for Pod Colson, but in my opinion, I don't think the Canucks should do that because I don't think they would benefit from a guy like Broberg being on their team. But there probably are some other prospects around the NHL world that do need changes of scenery. It's tough to find a team that doesn't have anybody like that, to be honest. So for Philip Broberg, it just seems to be a matter of time before yet another first-round top prospect is going to be on the move. This should not be the most difficult contract in the world to trade, and there are probably a bunch of teams that would like to get a guy like Broberg, considering the potential, considering the age, considering his skill set. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. How do you feel about the Oilers' handling of Broberg over the years, and how do you feel about him requesting a trade, as referenced by Kevin Weeks, as well as Frank Thanks, Sarah Bailey. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.